Now listen up, we are talking about laparoscopy this morning. Yes. Okay, and our expert in the studio with us is uh, Dr. Shanka Satapan, consultant at laparoscopic and general surgeon at the Columbia Asia Hospital in Taipei. Taiping. Good morning and welcome, sir. Good morning. Yes, <laughs> you got a lot of respect for me, okay? Because I could never be a surgeon in this lifetime. I don't think so. But you're a thrill seeker. Thrill seeker, but you know, uh, well, not when it comes to surgery. Okay? <laughs> when I see blood, I feel. Uh, okay, but anyway. <laughs> okay, talking about laparoscopy, can you tell us the history? We know it's been around. You were yeah. just sharing that with us. Z and yeah. in Malaysia, we are very much behind. We're far behind. So, so first. see, laparoscopy was started many years ago. Mm -hmm. The gynecologists were experts in it. Mm. You know, your laparoscopic uh, tubal ligation and stuff like that. So the gynecologists were always doing it, but the general surgeons could never come into the picture because technology was still behind. Okay. And then the camera became more sophisticated, the lenses became more sophisticated, mm. more advanced instruments were created. Mm. And suddenly in, in 1990, there was an explosion. Okay. Okay. The first guy who did lap cholecystectomy uh, had his license revoked. Because? In Malaysia? No, in overseas. Okay. I mean, the first time he did it. Mm -hmm. you know? The reason was nobody had seen it done before and they thought it was wrong. Right. When you had to do it the open way. Mm -hmm. you know? And then he was later on recognized again for it. Mm. Okay. You know? So it's been going on for 14 years now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, overseas. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of societies around there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, doctor, this is a surgical procedure, okay? Now, uh, who is it applicable to? Yeah, okay, this is not a surgical procedure. This is actually a surgical technique. Technique, technique. Okay. okay? So, most surgeries are done, you know, open, you just uh, big incision and everything. Yeah. So, the only difference in laparoscopy is it's a small incision. Mm -hmm. It's the same operation. Mm -hmm. So, previously, it was called minimally invasive surgery. Mm -hmm because they thought, you know, oh, it's, it's not so invasive. Mm -hmm. But what they realize is it's minimal invasion, uh, mm -hmm. incisions, maximally invasive. Mm -hmm. So they've done away with the term minimally invasive surgery. Okay. It sounds scary as well. <laughs> so now it's called minimal access surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So laparoscopy or minimal access surgery. It just means small little holes, you know, and through the small little holes, you do big little surgeries. I so understand. what kind of conditions are we looking at that could be applicable for these sort of... Uh, when they techniques? first started, it used to be simple things. A gallbladder, mm -hmm. you know, cholecystectomy. Mm -hmm. Then they had appendix, tubal ligation. These were the simple things. Now you're telling that then all, they the went on all the gynae were skilled, so that means it's all the... No, the, the gynecologists were doing this all the while, mm -hmm. but they were very limited into a few things. Mm -hmm. Then they went on from one step to another, okay. mm -hmm. then they went on to bigger things. Okay. And they started operating on the stomach, they op started operating on the small bowel, mm -hmm. they started operating on the kidney. Mm -hmm. Things that they thought never could operate laparoscopically, they started operating. Ah, the spleen. See. People are scared of the spleen. It's got one of the largest blood supplies, mm -hmm. but they do it laparoscopically. Okay. Whipples. There's this operation called Whipples. It's one of the most major general surgery operations. Mm -hmm. It's done laparoscopically. The first one took 13 hours. Mm. The first one. The first, the, the first time. time. Yeah, the first time. <laughs> now it's routinely, if, if the guy is experienced, five, six hours mm -hmm. you know, right. overseas. Now, tell, tell us, I'm really curious right now, what actually happens during the operation? Like, okay, uh, well, you, you mentioned that there are little holes, right? Yeah. Okay, and what, something goes in to those little holes. Right. And, uh, so what tell happens? Tell us from the eye of a doctor. Yes. <laughs> what happens is, okay, initially, you make a little nick in the skin, mm -hmm. okay? To operate in the abdomen or in the thorax or wherever, you need space. So mm -hmm. we create space. So what we do is we pump in carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. And your flat abdomen becomes like a pregnant lady. Mm -hmm. We create a lot of space. We put in a little needle in. We insufflate a lot of carbon dioxide, fill it up. Mm -hmm. And then we put the camera in. Mm -hmm. There it is on the screen right now, right? That's okay. right. So the first picture, you see the needle goes in. And then subsequently, all the other instruments go in. Mm. Okay. So some of them are 5 millimeter, some are 10 millimeter. One is the camera, the other is your left hand, the other is your right hand. So basically, you can't use your hands. So it's very difficult for surgeons. Mm -hmm. There's a long learning curve because surgeons, when we train, we train to use our hands. Mm -hmm. yes. When we pass out, we learn how to use our hands. We learn to feel with our hands. Yeah. Right. And then suddenly somebody comes and tells you, no, no, do surgery with chopsticks. Mm. And then you're stuck. Yes. Right. You know, because you can't feel. That's, true. That's what they say, you can't feel. So they're worried. the instruments are very small, very fine. Mm -hmm. you know? And they're all five millimeter. They have three millimeter instruments. Mm -hmm. 
That's known as needle scopic laparoscopy. Needle scopic. Needle scopic. Mm -hmm. It's only three millimeters and the scars are very fine, but instruments are really fragile okay. and they can bend. Mm -hmm. And if a telescope bends, it's 13,000 ringgit down the bin. Right. Can it bend during the procedure itself? Yes, it can. Okay, so tell us the pros and cons. Um, one, uh, I, I'm a bit scared when I heard about the carbon monoxide. Carbon dioxide? Ca sorry, carbon dioxide. So if, is that a <laughs> danger? No. In okay. That's why the anaesthetist has to be trained mm -hmm. for minimally invasive surgery. It just doesn't depend on the surgeon. Mm -hmm. It's a team approach. Mm -hmm. Everybody's worried. The patient has to be educated. Mm -hmm. The anaesthetist has to know what kind of uh, anaesthesia to give because the patient wants to go back home fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. And carbon dioxide, when you breathe, it comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the surgery, we let it all out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what little is remaining is absorbed by the body mm -hmm. and you breathe it out. Mm -hmm. Which is why we use carbon dioxide. Okay. Okay. So it's a safe gas, inert gas, non-explosive. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we, we you know use current and diatomy and mm -hmm. stuff like that in mm -hmm. trap. We don't want an explosion, do we? Okay. Right. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Let's not even imagine that. So two 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 more questions. Um, really, really obese patients and pregnant women. Right. Is now, it contraindications mm -hmm. in those days? 15 years ago, 14 years ago, they would say, oh, if you're pregnant, you can't have laparoscopy. If you're obese, you can't have laparoscopy. If you had previous surgery, you can't have laparoscopy. Now, these have, were absolute, now they become relative. Mm -hmm. Relative contraindications. That means, depending on your skill. Mm -hmm. If you're a new guy, previous surgery, don't do laparoscopy. If you're an experienced guy, no problem. Mm -hmm. Pregnant lady, try not to do laparoscopy. But if an experienced guy, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. obesity. Why is everybody so scared about obesity? Whenever you're obese, everything is in in uh, looks like in balance. You're walking and talking well, but your system's not running well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the moment you put the knife on the patient, the system goes down. Yeah. You have respiratory failure, kidney failure. A lot of things can go wrong. So, but uh, things have advanced a lot now. And what has happened now, we do regularly laparoscopic obesity surgery mm -hmm. around. So what is happening now is these patients, uh, we make the stomach smaller. Mm -hmm. And people think that by doing this laparoscopic obesity, they become slim. Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize is they can't eat. They can only eat a glass or two and, and uh, they think they can eat normally. And mm -hmm. when they eat normally, Complications happen. Okay. Oh. Is it the gastric bypass? This is a gastric bending. Gastric bending. Yeah, and then okay. there's a gastric bypass as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So these are all various surgeries. Using the gastric bending is reversible. Okay. But what's the point? You can only take two glasses uh, for lunch. Yeah. Mm. yeah? It's yeah. very difficult. So, doctor, um, let me ask you this question. When someone walks into the hospital and someone is due for surgery, he, um, does this person get an option to do this um, kind of technique or how does it go about? What, what is the procedure or formality? It's one of the main reasons I'm on this talk show is a lot of people don't know about laparoscopy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Everybody wants to do surgery. Normal surgery. Yeah. And when you tell them, oh, we have minimally invasive, you come in today, you go home tomorrow, they're amazed. And then tell you, was my appendix really taken out? I only got a half CM opening. Did mm. you really take it out? Yeah. You got to play them the video and show them the appendix yeah. is taken out. Mm. You know? So they find it hard to believe. After a hernia surgery, you can go home the next day. Right. You can go home the same day for a gallbladder surgery. Mm -hmm. So every patient, I have to explain. Yes. Okay, so they, they know exactly what they're going through. Yes. Now you highlighted some of the positive stuff. Well, tell us a bit more about that. The positive stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, advantages. When you look at advantages, the scar is small. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a nice scar. Yes. You know? <laughs> that's, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, at the end of the day is the scar is less, mm -hmm. the pain is less. Mm -hmm. Okay, even though you operate a lot inside, maximally invasive, but the pain is only from the skin. Mm -hmm. So they go home fast. Less complications, okay, uh, depends on your skill. Mm -hmm. Okay, if your skill, even a difficult surgery is not a problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other thing is, since there's less scar, uh -huh. healing is faster. Okay. Okay. And then we go into the abdominal cavity. So bowel tends to stick to wounds. Mm. And after many years, you come in with addition colleague, pain from the op scar mm -hmm. and vomiting and all that. You don't have these complications. Mm, because okay. the opening is small. I've gone in again for cases where I've done before. And the previous wound, there's nothing stuck to it. It's clean. Mm -hmm. you know? So these are the advantages.